Hi there. In this video, we're discussing a book called Out of Sight, written by James Patterson and Brendan Dubois. This is an amazing book. I didn't know how much I'd like it when I picked it up from the library, but it's absolutely fantastic. Everything about it is just amazing. The plot, the characters, the pacing, everything about it just made me want to read more. It's the first in a series starring a character called Amy Cornwall. There's not a second book written yet, and it's been a while since this book was written. I think this was published in 2019, so it's been a few years, and you'd think they'd have a second one by now, and I hope they do, because in the book you get hints that there could be a second, and I'm really, really hoping that they publish a second book in this series, because it's just amazing. Here's the book. And you probably can't tell in the video, but on the front cover it just says a couple of things. It says, she knows too much and it could cost her family everything. And that's quite gripping and intriguing as well. But you know, of course, you can't tell if a book's going to be good because of the cover. But what hooked me on this book was the first line in the first chapter. And I'll just read that to you. The first line is, I know within 33 seconds of entering the front door that my home is empty and my husband and daughter are missing. So that first line just hooked me straight away. And from then on, it was just a thrill ride. I just sped through this book. I couldn't get enough of it. As I said before, that first sentence gets you hooked. So the main character, Amy Cornwall, and she's an army intelligence officer. When she comes home one day, her family's missing. She doesn't assume they're down the street or gone next door or just gone for a walk somewhere. She knows they're missing and they're missing for a reason. She knows they've been taken. And as she's searching the house, she comes across a phone, which is not one of her phones, it's a burner phone on a table with a note. And the note says, don't contact any authorities or your family will be killed. Get down to a town and the town ends up being in Texas somewhere get down to a town, in 48 hours, you've got to rescue somebody who's been held hostage or held under arrest or something. She doesn't know anything about the scene, really. She just knows that there's somebody held somewhere and she has to go and grab them for these people that have her family. It reminds me of some of those action movies you get maybe in the 2000s, like the Bourne movies. And there are even elements that remind me of The Fugitive because... On the other side, she's been designated AWOL because in a few hours, you know, the next day, she's meant to go to this hearing for things that happened months ago in Afghanistan. Of course, she can't attend that hearing because she's trying to rescue her family by kidnapping someone. Other people are now trying to find her and bring her back for that hearing, bring her back to base because she's AWOL. So that's where I get the fugitive feel because we have another agent, a special agent, that's on the hunt for Amy. Amy's trying to avoid that agent and also kidnap somebody to rescue her family that's been kidnapped. That's like a vicious circle going on. In this book, it's all those threads and there's quite a few of them. They all make sense. They all feel so real. And it's down to the characters, really. The characters all feel so real. Because even though the events, you know, they're quite dramatic and, you know, they're not everyday events, but it's the characters that just feels so solid and so real, and that makes the whole book feel real. That's what really stuck with me through this read, as the characters that make everything seem so real. What I really love about this book is the cat and mouse game going on between Amy and Rosaria, and Rosaria is the special agent who's on the hunt for Amy. That cat and mouse game plays almost throughout the whole book, and they're both so clever and resourceful characters. Both female, of course, but very strong characters. And I know James Patterson has a thing for creating these strong characters in either some sort of law enforcement or, you know, special ops kind of characters. But these two characters feel so real. There's nothing fake about them. And they've both got very complex backgrounds, but they're also both so well-rounded, well-created. I love these two characters. And I really hope that there's a second book because I want to see who returns. I won't tell you what happens and who's returning or not if they have a second book, because I don't want to spoil anything for you, but these two characters are really special. 
I want to concentrate on Amy and Rosaria because in this book, they're the focus and they're explored the most in this book. There are other good characters in there as well, but Amy and Rosaria drive the plot forward. Most of the action and the chapters happen around them. They're the key focus in this story. So first, Amy. So Amy, as I said, is a army intelligence officer and she was working in Afghanistan, you know, six to eight months before the plot line in this book. Something happened over there and she thinks this is all linked to that. She thinks her family's been kidnapped because of what she did or what she's been accused of doing in Afghanistan. Is that the truth or not? You find that out as you get on further in the book. I won't mention that, you know, what is the truth here. So you have to read it for yourself, but it's quite gripping to see her come to terms with, you know, what she thinks is happening and why. And then the truth, when she finds out the truth. And that's such a good plot line and plot device. And I love the fact that she's so strong through this book. And even though she's facing all these odds, she's got to drive miles to kidnap someone herself. And she doesn't know if she's going to get there in time. And all the while, she's just imagining, is her family alive or not? And it's that strength of character. And James Patterson and Brendan Dubois did a great job in creating this character and giving us doubts as well as, is her family safe or not? Of course, we get to see little snippets of her family in captivity. She doesn't, of course. So we know her character is going through things that we can see are happening and she can't. And that also adds to the tension and just the, the stress levels for this character and the suspense as well in this novel. Another great thing about Amy is she's not created as a perfect character. She makes mistakes. She's got flaws. And she actually makes mistakes while she's trying to rescue her family. You know, she doesn't do everything perfectly. And, and that's down to the stress and just the time frame. She's got to do things. And so we're along for that ride and we feel that stress and we feel that tension and that short time frame, she's got to do something. We feel all that. And I felt really stressed and heightened and edge of my seat through this book. And it's down to the writing and it's down to just the plotting as well, because his character and her actions were plotted so well. Rosaria Vasquez is just another amazing character. Feels so real, created so well, and everything she does is so lifelike. And just again, she is not a perfect character. She's making mistakes herself. She has her own doubts about the orders she's given. You know, everything about her is so human. And she's got such a great background story in this novel as well. And you can see that her background in the novel is her motivation for her actions in the present timeline. So that's really interesting and well done as well from the authors. I thought Rosaria is just as good a character as Amy. Even though Amy is the main character, of course, Rosaria holds her own in this book. And I think both of them really deserve that equal footing because they're just both such great characters and it just made this book all that better to read with perfect characters actually that are so lifelike and they make all the events, even the events that are big and a bit over the top sometimes, they make those events seem so real. I love this book. And there are people out there who are going to say, James Patterson, oh, poo poo. I'm not going to read this because I don't like James Patterson anymore. Or he's a bit of a hack. He produces so many books and has co-authors. And how can someone have so many books coming out all the time? There's so much negativity out there about James Patterson. And yes, you're not going to like every book that comes out by James Patterson. I don't love every book that comes out by him. But when I do like a book that is by James Patterson, I'm going to give credit where credit's due. And this one is actually amazing. And I rate this a five out of five. I think that you really should read it. Give this one a go. Even if you're a bit negative towards James Patterson, you know, you may have read something and not liked it as much. Give this one a go because this was a brilliant book. I don't think there's any flaws in it whatsoever, for me anyway. I thought everything about it was wonderful. The plot, the pacing, the characters, just everything about it. It's just an amazing read. On my channel, I will review more James Patterson books. Also more books in the thriller and suspense genres. If you don't want to miss out on any of those, check out my channel and subscribe. Also, check out the thriller playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.